Hey guys, Mr. Eck here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to take powers of complex numbers and what a power of a complex number means in the complex plane. So if we have a complex number like 1 plus i to the 8th, there's an easy way and there's a hard way to take this 8th power. Uh, I'll tell you what the hard way is, and I'm not going to do it, is to write eight of these out and sort of foil it piece by piece, um, being very careful about combining like terms every time. You can do it. I've had students do it. It ain't fun. You're probably going to screw something up. Let's go with a better way. So instead of doing this nonsense, writing this thing, whole thing out, we're going to take that number and convert it to what we're calling polar form. So every complex number can be plotted on the complex plane. The complex plane has a real axis and an imaginary axis. The imaginary axis is in place of the y. The real axis is in place of the x. So if you plot this number on the complex plane, it plots similarly to the point 1 comma 1. Um, now, just like the point 1 comma 1 has a, a, a polar representation, so does this point. So if you look at this, uh, it's pretty quick to identify that it has an angle of 45 degrees. And you can do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out it has a hypotenuse of the square root of 2. So in polar form, uh, this is expressed as square root of 2, the hypotenuse, times uh, cosine 45 plus I sine 45. And this is really like just exactly similar to the polar to rectangular conversion for regular um, numbers, nothing imaginary numbers. So the only difference here is there's an I. Um, but if you remember, x was r cosine theta, y was r sine theta. Well, instead of y, we have this imaginary axis. So instead of writing it something like x comma y, we write something like a plus b i. Same idea, same connection. Uh, so we're writing it in this weird polar way. And since both of these uh, would have an r out front, it's basically been factored out. Uh, the r has been factored out here, so you only have to write it once. So polar form of this number is written like square root of 2 cosine 45 plus i sine 45. We can confirm that the polar form is correct by just like writing everything back together. So cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2 plus uh, i sine 45 is also whoop, square root of 2 over 2. Now we said this is times root 2. So if you bring this into both terms, boom, boom, boom you get 4 over 2 plus i times 4 over 2, which is 2 plus 2i. Which is wrong, um, because Mr. Eck doesn't know how to multiply. So we're looking for the form 1 plus i square root of 2 times square root of 2 is not 4, it is 2. Um, I'm going to not cut that mistake out, because I feel like it's something I'm going to see all the time, so I just want to you know show it to you so I call that out. Um, this is 2 over 2 plus i times 2 over 2, which is 1 plus i. So that's one way to check that your polar form works, is just if polar form works, is just evaluate the trig uh, that you put in. So why would we mess around with any of this polar form stuff? Like, what does this have to do with, with doing powers, right? Remember that our goal here is to do uh, this grossness in some better way. So uh, remember what number we were looking at, 1 plus i, and remember what our polar form was. We found its angle was 45 degrees. Now I'm going to flip over uh, to a different piece of software here and we'll play around. So the key discovery here, the key thing that makes this work is the realization that powers in the complex plane do two things. They expand the size of the number, right? When you make a, take a power of a number, it gets larger. In this case, larger means farther from zero and it creates a rotation. So this number, here's our complex number z. I position it approximately where uh, our original number z was, which had a 45 degree angle. And notice that z squared, it's gotten a little larger. It's gotten farther from zero. And it is rotated by the equal angle here. If I make z smaller, let's say z was only, oh, uh, 15 degrees. Then z squared looks like it would be 30 degrees. It's always twice as large. If excuse me, if z was 90 degrees, then z squared would automatically become 180 degrees. If z was 
150 degrees over here in the second quadrant, z squared would be another 150 going all the way to the fourth quadrant. So the bigger your original number is, sort of the more times, the further that z squared is going to go around. Well, we weren't looking for z squared, right? Our original number, we were trying to do something to the eighth power. So I'm going to turn on a couple more powers. The pattern is still followed. So watch as I move z around. Oh, I'm going to keep z close to 1 so that z to the 6 doesn't just go completely off the screen. Um, because every time you take a power, it does get larger. Uh, unless you are smaller than 1, then every time you take a power, you get a little smaller, which I think is another special sort of neat case. So we're going to stick closer to 1 just like this. Notice that if uh, my original angle is about 15 degrees-ish, then, oh, come back out here. Uh, the angle of z to the 6th is going to be 6 times that size. It's just sort of increasing by uh, the same amount each time. I could draw little segments in here to really show that off if I wanted to. Let's see. Let's put that in just to really help you see the angle rotating out here. Um, every one of these is going to be like an equal pie slice every time. No matter where that angle is, no matter how big it is, it's always going to be the same sort of size of pi. Make it really small, make it really big, always going to be the same rotation. Um, what starts to get really goofy is when you're doing a large power, like sixth power is what I have here, eighth power is what we're trying to do on the paper, and the original number starts to get big. So notice I'm just like happily rotating. I'm moving z around, kind of moving around the circle of radius 1 just to keep all the numbers small. And when I get z to about 60 degrees, notice that my z to the 6th is going to start to wrap around again. Now that this is greater than 60, z to the 6th is going to be larger than 360. And so it's going to travel itself all the way around. I can show this by kind of drawing the uh, full spiral out so we can see kind of the spiral of points, we can see the equal angles, and we can follow these lines out as they follow the z's. And it's going to start to look real messy real fast. But if your original z is at, uh, this is a nice number, it looks like about 120 degrees, then z squared is going to be uh, double that, 240, z third, is going to be back at 360. Then z to the fourth is going to be at 120 again. And we kind of keep rotating. So this is all tied back into that first concept you learned about angles, which is coterminals. Um, right? z to the third has rotated 360 degrees to get back to zero. z to the sixth has rotated 720 degrees two times around to get back to the zero point. So the big idea is that powers in complex land are rotations. Let's use that idea to solve the problem up here. So we were trying to do 1 plus i to the 8th. Well, that's going to do two things. That 8 is going to become a power on the square root of 2. And it's going to multiply the angle times 8. So let's calculate what that would be. Square root of 2 to the 8th is the same as 2 to the 4th, which is 4 times 4, or 16. And 45 times 8, so chosen so cunningly, is 360. So this is going to be 16 cosine of 360 plus i sine 360. And interesting, that's a nice number. Uh, so very convenient. Cosine of 360 is 1. Sine of 360 is 0. So the i term is going to drop out. And really, this is equal to the number 16. If you don't believe me, maybe you will believe our friend from Texas. Now, if you don't know where the i key is, it's right above the period here. So you can hit second period. Let's see what she says. 16. So sometimes a power, you'll do a power, you would, it would be horrible to do by hand. No fun, not, not at all. And look, it's just a nice number. 
So now we're going to take that process in reverse. Um, we have just solved an equation of the form u to the 8th equals 16. Uh, we, our original u was 1 plus i, and we did this whole thing, this whole power, and we got 16. Hmm, I wonder what other solutions there are to this equation. I can think of one right now. Um, square root of 2 to the 8th equals 16. True? Uh, let's see. Then 1 plus i to the 8th also equaled 16. Very strange. So it seems like this number u could have many possible solutions. I wonder how many there could be. Well, the theorem that we call the fundamental theorem of algebra. So fun, so fundamental, we gave it that name, said that there are going to be eight solutions over the complex number z. So some of them will be real, like square root of 2. Some of them will be complex, like 1 plus i. And in fact, most of them are going to be complex. Um, I think the only two real ones are square root of 2 and negative square root of 2, both of which you take to the 8th power, you get 16. So we're back to the, uh, the GeoGebra image here. I've done a couple things. I've added an eighth power, and I've given myself a little more control over the angle of the original z. Um, the other thing I've done is fix the z on a circle where the radius is square root of 2, uh, because I'm really trying to explore which um, things are going to have radius 16, and since I know that square root of 2 to the eighth is 16. So first thing I notice is uh, when I have... My first number here, it's just representing square root of 2. And z to the 8th, where is it? Where is it? It's all the way out here. It's 16. Now I'm going to start changing this angle. I'm going to start increasing it. I'm going to zoom out so you can see all the angle, um, all the way around. As I increase the angle, 5, 10, 15, 20, notice how the, the points are starting to wrap around. I'm getting kind of that spiral. Um, but I'm not really getting a result until, oh look, z to the 8th is back at 16 after one full spiral. So that's at an angle of 45 degrees. Um, I've gone all the way around an angle of 45. Uh, 8 powers gets me back to 360, so that's my first answer for the square root uh, of 8. All right, I'm going to keep going with the angle. Look at all this room I've got on my slider. Let's see if I can find another number. So as I increase the original angle of z, Ooh, I'm rotating, I'm rotating, z to the 8th is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, look, when the original angle z was 90, I did z squared, z cubed, z to the 4th, z to the 5th, z to the 6th, z to the 7th, all the way down here, and then z to the 8th, back to 16. So, 90, let's see, what's 90 times 8? Ooh. That's 720. So I made it to 360. I made it to 720. That's going to give me another root. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write down that root that I've just discovered. So that was uh, along the imaginary axis. So that root is going to be square root of 2 times i to the 8th is also going to equal 16. If you don't believe me, check it in your calculator, do it by hand. I don't really care how you do it. It's easy to do. We'll also get 16. All right, let's go back to GeoGebra and keep playing. Uh, so I'm going to keep pulling this angle out. All right, we're going to watch that z to the 8th point. Oh, here I am again. z to the 8th is back at 16. Um, I'm going to scroll back and let's look at how we got there again. So I was rotating my angle. Oh, I was rotating my angle. I was at 90 z to the 8th went all the way around one more time. So it looks like I've gone around one, at least twice. It looks like I've gone around three times to get to z to the 8th here. So let's see. Let's double check. What's 135? That is the angle that my original alpha was at, times 8. Oh, 1080. 1080 is another coterminal of uh, 360. So it seems like every time that I can take the original angle 45 
and multiply it by something or kind of get around, find an angle that can get me to a coterminal of 360, it's going to work. Something's going to happen. Um, so let's see. So what is this angle? Ooh, well, this one's a little messy. Um, it has a radius of square root of 2. It has an angle of 135. And, you know, looking at the coordinates in polar coordinates, it'd be square root of 2 cosine 135 times I sine 135. Um, but knowing what those are and knowing where we are in the complex plane, this looks like the number is going to be negative 1 uh, plus I. So let's see. Let's go write that one down. Where are we? So I'm, what I'm kind of writing down here is the original angles of all of the roots that we're finding. Um, ooh, this one is a bonus root. I'm actually going to take this and move it down here. Negative root 2, because in the complex plane, that's just along the negative x-axis. That would be an angle right away of 180 degrees. Let's take a look at that one. So if I set my slider here to 180 exactly, oh, get back here. If I set the slider to 180 exactly, here's that negative square root of 2. And then every increasing power has rotated 180 degrees. So I've gone z, here's z squared, here's z cubed, here's z to the fourth, Here's z to the 5th, here's z to the 6th, here's z to the 7th, and here's z to the 8th. And every time they go out a little bit more, because you're multiplying by one more factor of root 2, and by the time you get to z to the 8th, you've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 half circles, or 4 full circles, getting you all the way out to z to the 8th. So 4 full circles, that is 360 times 4, corresponds with the angle of 1440. That corresponded with the angle 1080. That was like the angle 720. That was like the angle 360. Um, zero times eight is zero. So it's sort of like coming from every co-terminal of uh, 360. I'm going to start trying to shortcut this process. All right. I think what I've done is I've gotten a bunch of these numbers. I know there better be eight solutions, and I've gotten one, two, three, four, five of them. So there's three more. Let's do a shortcut. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my spreadsheet and make a list of all the multiples of 360. So I'm just going to do 360 times that and copy this down, right? So everything in this column that you're seeing here is a multiple of 360, all the way up to 21. I'm not going to need this many, but I'm just going to have them anyway. Now what I'm going to do is take that and divide by 8. Why do I divide by 8? Because I'm trying to do an 8th power. And look, that first angle was the angle of the original point, 45 degrees. 720 divided by 8 is 90. So what I'm doing is, as I drag this down, is it's copying down the formula, dividing this by 8 every time. These are all the possible coterminals of 360 that are divided by 8. What I'm going to do is look at the ones that are less than 360. Here they are, strictly less, actually, because when I get to 360, I've kind of, like, gone full circle. Um, hold on. I forgot one. You guys. Never forget zero. It'll make you sad. All right, here are my roots. I know that at these angles, I'm going to get 
a number that when I multiply it by 8 gets me a coterminal to 360, which means that I'm going to get back to that sort of 16. So 225, 270, and 315 were what I didn't have yet. So how can I use this? Well, going back to my list, instead of just searching through GeoGebra, I can say, okay, 225, 270, and 315 are going to be the angles of my next roots. And then I go and sort of put them in polar. Square root of 2, uh, cosine 225 plus i sine 225. Square root of 2, cosine 270 plus i sine 270. And square root of 2, cosine 315 plus i sine 315. Then uh, I can think about knowing those angles, knowing the radius. I can think about where that would be. This one would be here. This one would be down there. This one's going to be over there. So I think these angles are all going to be uh, negative 1 minus i, uh, negative i, uh, square root of 2. I'm forgetting my root 2. There we go. Oh, this one's already got a radius of root 2. Uh, this is going to be negative i root 2. And this last one is going to be uh, 1 minus i. And I know when I put that to the 8th, it'll be 16. When I put this to the 8th, it'll be 16. Big bracket here, maybe. And when I put this to the 8th, it'll be 16, giving me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 roots to the equation. Uh, u to the 8th equals 16. All right, that's kind of a mess because I was trying to bring in all the explanation in the middle here. I'm going to pick another problem, and we're going to uh, show you how to solve it sort of the easy way and the hard way again. All right, here's a problem I've just made up. It says, find all of the fifth roots of 243. So I'm looking to solve the equation u to the fifth equals 243. I know one answer already. It's 3. So that's a 1. I know, though, because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, that this had better have 5 solutions because the degree of that polynomial is 5. So how am I finding? I need five more, four more. I've already got one things here. I also can't seem to think of any more real solutions, so I'm afraid that the other four are all going to be complex numbers. Um, I've said here you can leave your answers in polar form because the, especially with a fifth power, it's not going to divide nicely into 360, so we're not going to get like 30, 60, 90 patterns, but we're still going to do the problem. So... I want to think about what I did before. I was playing around with numbers where uh, when I got to a certain pattern, it kind of did a full circle. So let me get only a fifth power here. Um, I need to kind of place this in a way that when I get a fifth power, I'll get all the way back to 360. So the best thing to do is to find the angle of that first Z that's going to get me all the way around. Ooh, I can't just guess and check anymore because, like, right, I go, I'm too low, and then I'm too high, and then I'm too low, and then I'm too high. So it's not going to work to just guess and check. Um, I'm going to think about 360. 360 is where I'm going to try to go. And I'll take 360 and divide it by 5 because I'm trying to do the fifth power. Or I guess I'm doing the fifth root when I divide, right? Roots, powers are like multiplying, roots are like dividing. Um, so 360 divided by 5, that happens to be 72 degrees. So I know that on the complex plane, at a radius of, or at an uh, angle of 72 degrees and a radius of 3, if I do this number to the fifth power, it's going to have um, an angle of 360, because 360 times uh, 72 times 5 is 360. 
and it's going to have a radius of 243 because of what I already set. So my second solution is going to be um, 3 cosine 72 plus I sine 72. Um, since 70, cosine 72 and sine 72 aren't nice numbers, right? It's not like square root of 3 over 2. It's nothing we've memorized. I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, it kind of goes with what I'm looking at here, which I noticed that uh, when I put the angle at 75, z to the fifth is way too big. Um, but when I put the angle back at 70, z to the fifth is just a little bit too small. So it looks like 72 is right about where I want to be. All right, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to move this angle uh, so I rotate twice around. So z to the fifth, now I've gone two full rotations. Ooh, get back there, little guy. It looks like maybe at about 150, um, a little bit more than 140, when z is over in the second quadrant. I'll have gone two times around, and I'll be back at uh, the zero axis. So two times around is represented by, where am I? 720. So to find this next one, I'm going to do 720 divided by 5. And get 144. So my third root is going to be 3 cosine 144 plus i sine 144. Any guesses about where the next one is going to end up? I'm starting, starting to see something. And the thing I'm starting to see is that 72 times 2 is 144. So I have this pattern with the 360s and 720s, and I'm also getting a pattern with the roots that I'm developing. Um, what if I went 3 times around? So 3 times around is 1. 2, 3 equals 10, oh, 80 degrees. So then I could do 1080 divided by 5, and I would get 216. So my fourth root. Um, my fourth fifth root is going to be 3. Every one of these has the same radius because we still need that radius to increase to 243. Uh, 3 cosine 216 plus i sine 216. So that when I do this whole thing using DeMoff's theorem, right, to the fifth power, I do 5 times 216 and I end up with 1080. So it's sort of like going backwards. Hmm. All right, so there's my 216. And then I said there's five of them. Let's just get the fifth. Uh, after 1080, whoa, whoa, 360 times four, that's 1440. All right, so 360 times four is 1440. Then I can do that divided by five to figure out what is gonna go five times into that. I get 288. So that's uh, over in the third quadrant, 288. And so my other angle, my last angle is going to be 3 cosine 288 plus I sine 288. So this is all very mechanical, right? You, you take your multiples of 360. You divide by 5 because we're doing a fifth root. And then once you get that angle, you just sort of plug it into the DeMoff's theorem formula. It's annoying, and it kind of hides the real beauty here. Here's what's going on. Every one of these solutions is 72 degrees apart. And so each of these roots is creating kind of a little star. Here's 
0, root 1. Here's root 2. Here's root 3. Here's root number 4. And here's root number 5. And every single one of these is 72 degrees apart from each other. And so this kind of gives you an idea about a shortcut. Instead of going all the way up to these multiples of 360, figure out what the first one is. And then do this one times 2, then this one times 3, then this one times 4, then this one times 5. So I'm going to do one more problem using this new pattern that I've just found. So here's our last problem. We're going to find all of the ninth roots of 1. And so we are trying to solve an equation of the form u to the ninth equals 1. The fundamental theorem of algebra says this is going to have nine answers. The first answer is that 1 to the ninth equals 1. All right, there's your first one. Now, let's think strategically about that pattern that we observed earlier, that somehow Here's the first one, 1, but I'm going to have all these other ones spread out kind of equally around 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, kind of like this, so that um, there's a couple in each quadrant and everyone has an equal angle apart. So I'm going to figure out what that angle spacing is. Well, I actually already did it. Um, I did 360 divided by 9, and I found out that that angle spacing is 40. So this first angle would be 40 degrees apart. The second angle would be 40 degrees from that, 40 degrees from that, 40 degrees from that, 40 degrees from that. Note the... Um, negative 1 is not a ninth root of 1 because of the uh, even odd powers working out. So um, negative 1 would not work here. That's why it goes straight past 40 degrees after that, 40 degrees after that, 40 degrees after that, and 40 degrees after that. And if we've gone that many chunks of 40 degrees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we'll get back to 360. And so we'll have completed the full circle. So here are the answers in polar form. Here was my first one. Here's my second one. It's 1. That's the radius. I chose radius 1 here just to keep things simple. If it's a different radius, obviously you do something different. 1 cosine 40 plus i sine 40. That was easy. The next one is 1 cosine 80 plus i sine 80. Again, easy. Next one, 1 for the radius, cosine 120, plus i sine 120. Oh, hey, that's interesting, uh, because I know that uh, 120 is a nice number. Also, um, I think since this is over here, this would also count as a third root of 1. Um, Right? Like if it's sometimes the ninth root is going to be a third root as well. Um, 40 and 80 wouldn't work though. Those are the first time those appear as roots. All right. And to finish out the list here, uh, cosine 1 cosine of 280 plus 40 is 320 plus i sine 320. Um, now, if we had to put our answers back in rectangular form, we'll, we would just evaluate. Um, whatever cosine 200 is, it would be some gross decimal. Um, but anytime, unless it's 1 6 something like 120 or 240, it's, it's probably better to just leave things in polar form um, because you've, again, you've solved the problem here. Format doesn't matter as much. So these are, right here, the nine answers 
to this equation, all using that pattern that we've recognized about rotating around uh, the origin. So if you rotate 320 around the origin nine times, let's just do it. Not. You should multiply, not divide. Um, you get 2,880. Now, I don't know all my multiples of 360, so I'm going to uh, divide that by 360 just to check. And look, it's a multiple of 360. It's sort of eight full circles around, uh, around the circle. So that's a confirmation that this number, if we multiply this to, this to the ninth power, it would go eight full times around the circle, and we'd land right back where we started or where we wanted to be at one. So this is Demov's theorem. Um, I've probably talked for a little longer than I intended, but I hope it's been instructive. I'll post that GeoGebra online for you to play with. I'll put the link in the video. And uh, as always, you know, watch more videos on the channel. I'll try to record some more videos about uh, Math 4 stuff as we go. I know the year is ending, but this is the stuff that's starting to get really, really complicated, and it's nice to have a video for. So do stay tuned to my channel. Uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in class.